Um, I got these geographs from Mitchell. This is his work in his presentation. And I'm flipping through them because some of them are less important than some of the other ones in, in my view. Um, this one is an important one and gives a diagram of the experimental setup that he did. We can see um, a device that he calls a nanor. And what this nanor is, is the device that I've been referring to. He's got a small amount of palladium embedded in a very small form as, um, well, he says they look like raisins under uh, an SEM, a scanning electron microscope. So they're nanoscale in size. Um, there's wires on one side and the other side, so an electrical current can go through the nanomaterial. And when an electrical current goes through, it stimulates um, a thermal event. And when the electrical current stops, the excess heat stops as well. To calibrate the system, he has a resistor, which is next to the nanor. And um, then he has various temperature measurements as uh, indicated on the diagram. So the, the input power he takes is the electrical current times the voltage. And he has a number of ways of measuring the electrical output power. So the experiment was done at MIT. Here's some pictures of MIT. In the lower left-hand corner is Mitchell and um, his demo. And um, during the uh, short course, Mitchell ran his experiment. And on the day of the short course when he ran it, it produced an energy gain of a factor of 14. So here's um, the data from that particular run. You can see on the left-hand side of the graph something that says control. The blue solid curve is the electrical input power in watts. It's not very much input power because the sample is very small. The, the mass of the nanor is much less than one gram. You, you can see the thermal output of the control in the red, and it follows the input relatively closely. If it were a perfect calorimeter, it would be exactly the same as the blue line. In the second half of the plot, you can see the input power in blue. So this is the electrical power current times voltage. You can see the thermal output in red, and it's much larger than the electrical uh, input. Um, each count is four seconds. This is um, a several hour uh, event. Um, within the field, uh, people ask whether the energy can be of chemical origin. In this particular experiment, um, I used Mitchell's numbers to try to make an estimate of what the relevant chemical energy could be. Um, if you assume that the entire mass of the zirconium were zirconium metal, instead of zirconium oxide, and then you said that maybe the metal is burning, and that's the source of the energy, the amount of energy that you would get corresponds to what is produced in the experiments in less than one hour. Um, this experiment has been running since January at MIT, and it's exceeded uh, the chemical levels of possible energy. Um, by several hundred times uh, at this point. I think we're, we're over a thousand times uh, chemical energy uh, at this point. Mitchell has a number of different ways of looking at his data in order to understand whether the excess heat is real and how it works. Um, this is one such uh, example. Um, the, where it says control, the blue line corresponds to the input power in watts. The red line 
is the temperature change in degrees centigrade. So what you see is that an input power um, in the neighborhood of 10 to 20 milliwatts is giving a temperature increase uh, as large as 0 0.3 degrees centigrade. In the next experimental data set, you see the input power um, also in uh, watts, and in this case it's between 2 and 6 milliwatts, and you can see the thermal response is as large as, as a degree uh, centigrade. What this shows is that um, as a real physical effect, uh, the lower input electrical power to the nanar is resulting in a much larger uh, temperature. So we have the beginnings of some confidence in the um, measurements. Uh, Mitchell historically does his calorimetry many different ways and uh, as a way to check to make sure that he's not being fooled by one diagnostic in particular. In, the, in this plot, he's presenting the data slightly differently. Uh, in the first set of data where it says control, the input power you can see is stepped with a blue line between 8 milliwatts and 18 milliwatts. The red line now is the input power, um, is the uh, temperature difference divided by the input power. So you can see that for a given level of uh, input power, the temperature that you get per unit input power is roughly constant at different input powers. In the next set of data where it says nanor, the temperature divided, the input power is in green. The temperature divided by the input power is in red. And Mitchell is very interested in this curve because what it says is that the nanor has a certain input power that it likes to see. For example, in the middle of the curve, the red line is higher. And what that means is that at an input power around 4 milliwatts, the nanor is more efficient at producing excess power than at other uh, input powers. So this is the, the basic result that Mitchell uh, has and was demonstrated at MIT and continues to be demonstrated at MIT e even now. Um, people are welcome to come in and visit. There is more data. I will show a little bit more data and um, it, in some sense it's pretty repetitive because the device works again and again and again and it sort of works pretty much the same each time. Um, in this case, this was the night after the demo. Mitchell did some more runs. And this is uh, input power and um, also output power. For example, the blue curve, the, the blue lines at the bottom that are solid are the input power current times voltage. The red line is the thermal output power. The very first curve is one where the resistor serving as a control is being run. And one can see that the output power is very close to the input power, suggesting the calorimetry is okay. Then for the next curve, the, the next peak, the input power is lower because it's the input power to the device. The output power is the red line that goes up to 120 milliwatts, 0 0.12 watts. That's the thermal output power of the nanor. Mitchell then goes back to run the resistor, and you can see the power balance is pretty good. Then Mitchell runs the nanor. Now, people have noticed that the power seems to be going down from nanor curve to nanor curve, which, which is true. Um, so what happened is that 
when Mitchell first loaded the Nanner with deuterium, the loading was very high, which is good for excess heat production. The Nanner, the sealing of the deuterium in the Nanner is imperfect, and we've lost some deuterium, which you can see corresponds to the power going down. About a month after this, the power went down further and finally reached zero. Um, the gain became unity, and um, we were discouraged because the nanar didn't seem to be working. However, um, it's good because it provides added confidence So Mitchell uh, went to higher uh, voltage on the nanner when that happened and managed to convince it to come back to life. And it's uh, remained on for another two months uh, afterwards. Anyway, there's, there's more data. And the, the basic message is that you can see that the... Um, device produces excess power when the current is on. It's reproducible effect controlled. It runs again and again from day to day. And uh, it's very interesting. Uh, this is a, a different diagnostic, a heat flow diagnostic. Uh, Mitchell has a Zabeck calorimeter wrapped around the cell. And in this case, the um, the red lines are the result of heat flow normalized to input power. Basically what you can see is that when the red lines are high, the um, nanor is producing excess heat, and when the red lines are low, um, Mitchell is running the current through the resistor. So this is a, an independent diagnostic that helps confirm that the um, nanner is actually producing excess power and we're not being fooled by an artifact. I, I think this may be a, a good place to stop. I, I don't know if questions are allowed, but now would be a good time to, uh, if there were any questions that would relate to this if we have time. Thank you, Professor, <clears throat> because you show us uh, a very lot of uh, results and uh, repeated results, and this is important for us. So that now there is a coffee break, and we have a strike 20 minutes to stay here after. Thank you. I remember to all that uh, all the papers uh, that uh, are shown can be downloaded by the web official website of the conference.